all doing good out there? We, we are going to make a strawberry festival bread. I know many of you from the Isla Public Library have picked up some grab and go kits. So I will tell you exactly what is in it. And I'll go over different ways that you could change this too. If you have any questions too, my son Chris is here. So just put it in the chat and uh, let us know. Uh, I know some are making it with, actually, you know what? I want to ask uh, how many people are taking the kit and making it with us? So uh, if you want to put it in the chat, let us know. That way I kind of know to go at your pace too. So very important. Pick it up. So I'm going to go over what is in the bags first. Okay, everybody. So in the one bag, uh, the larger bag, you have the flour, you have baking soda, salt, and the cinnamon. And it's all measured, of course, correctly. Uh, then in another bag, you have white sugar and brown sugar. Okay. And then in another bag, you will have some powdered sugar. And that will be for later when it comes out of the oven, when you make the glaze and it goes right on top of it. Okay. So, uh, do we have anybody out there making it with us? Just watching. I'll make it when I'm done. All right. Yep. I just wanted to check because if somebody's making it with us, I just want to take the time. So we are all, uh, I'm going at their pace too. All right. So to make this bread, what you're going to do is you're going to take two full cups of the all purpose flour. Just level that off like that. Okay, so two full cups. And then we're using baking soda. Baking soda, one teaspoon of baking soda, but make sure it's nice and level. We're gonna put a half teaspoon of salt. So that way it'll bring out that cinnamon flavor, the strawberries, the salt, uh, the salt, uh, the vanilla, anything like that. And then a quarter teaspoon of cinnamon. If you like your cinnamon, you can go a little bit higher on that, okay? It adds a nice flavor to it. So we're just gonna mix this up really well. So if you have your kit, just make sure you mix all the ingredients because they are not mixed in, okay? Somebody wanting a lease? No, they want blood. Okay, and then in our other bowl, let's take one egg. I took the egg out about an hour ago, just to get it to room temperature. So one egg. And then we want three quarters of a cup of the white sugar. So I have the half cup right here and the quarter cup. And then I'm just gonna take another a quarter cup of the brown sugar, but make sure it is nice and packed in there. Just like that. We'll move this to the side. Get anybody has any questions, comments, jump in whenever you want. I'm just gonna break up the brown sugar. Okay, just mix this in. Now, I know the recipe calls for buttermilk. If you can, please try to use the buttermilk. The buttermilk really does make it delicious, okay? Um, and I know, yes, you can make buttermilk, but there is nothing like the store-bought buttermilk. Uh, it has a thick consistency and it will be better for your bread, okay? So I'm gonna take one cup, just make sure you shake it really good. And then I want one cup. I'm just gonna add that right into the uh, sugar and egg mixture here. And now you can use a third cup of either vegetable oil, canola oil, or melted coconut oil. So either one. I have some vegetable oil here that I am gonna use. So a third of a cup. And yes, it will be great to be back at the Isla Public Library in person. November, like Lori said, that's, that's what we are shooting for. 
And if we keep going the way we've been, I think what we're gonna make it. Okay, so some vegetable oil. Now let's whisk this really well together. Make sure you get all those brown sugar clumps out of there. Go up against the side of the wall right here. Hmm. And then we're just gonna leave this on the side like this. Lori said yes, it'll be wonderful to have you back in person. Who said that? Lori. Lori, thank you, Lori. Yes. I've gotten to see Lori a couple times, but uh, I haven't seen the patrons yet, so I am looking forward to that. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut up some strawberries. I want about a cup and a half of strawberries. I want to dice them, and the question earlier was, can you use frozen strawberries? I would suggest not, especially at this time of the year when... They are just so plentiful. Uh, you can get so many of them. Uh, they will just be, uh, it'll add so much wetness to it. So uh, get the fresh ones, cut them up really small, put them on a paper towel just to drain any excess liquid, okay? So again, I want about a cup and a half of the strawberries. Now, if you're not a strawberry fan, you can add blueberries, raspberries, or blackberries to this. It will be fine. If you want to make the combination of like blueberries and uh, strawberries and raspberries, you could certainly do that. I would not go any more than two cups of berries as they kind of give up off a lot of water. So you don't want to water it now. Someone said, I was told that there's a shortage. Shortage, uh, are, are you talking strawberries? I'm not, I just want to make sure. This is, there's been toilet paper shortages too, so I just want to make sure we're on the same page. So if you want to let me know what the shortage is, I'd be happy to let you know if I know about it or not. Or Yes, yeah, strawberries. Strawberries. Okay, so for the local... Uh, it's very, it's very possible. I hadn't heard that yet, uh, but I hadn't gotten out to start getting the fresh local strawberries yet. So uh, yeah, very, very possible. Hopefully not though, hopefully just a rumor. So we're just chopping these all up really, really well here. Probably about two to three more, and I'm about a cup to a cup and a half. And I still have to add in two teaspoons of the pure vanilla extract. Said strawberries couldn't make my pink drink. No strawberries. No strawberries. Okay. So uh, absolutely, just change it to blueberries then. You're going to, uh, if you are making this with me, uh, just turn on your oven right now to 350. You want to have a loaf pan, about a nine by five loaf pan, and then uh, put them, it, put it into the oven when it's ready for 50 to 60 minutes. Okay. You want to let this cool really well before you put the glaze on at the very end. Okay, so I need a couple more strawberries. Uh, that'll be fine. Good. Yeah, I'm going to use four more, and then we are good. And then we're going to mix the batter. And then while it is in the oven, we make the glaze. Yummy. Uh, you know anybody from the ISO Public Library? Tell them there are kits left there. Okay, Lori had said that there's still some available. Lori, is that for non-residents too? Because I know sometimes you may get some people from East Islip or uh, West Islip. So I just want to know, uh, just so they know whether to come to the library or not. Just chop this up here. All right, I'm just going to throw this on the paper towel. Just let that 
absorb in here? She said, yes, some kids left. Okay. And if a patron is watching uh, and, has, and is out of district, to call them first. Okay, got it. Now I'm going to add to this liquid here two teaspoons of vanilla extract. And Susan X, where do we find this recipe? Uh, Lori, I'm going to let you uh, take that away. Where can uh, somebody maybe that's not from district get this recipe? She says she's going to post it. Okay. And now let's take the dry ingredients and just fold it in nice and slowly. Just get it to where it's incorporated. And then this is a really pretty cake because you get the decorated at the end. So always have some extra like strawberries or blueberries, something like that. Okay. Just bring this batter in here. Just gonna take the whisk, finish that off like this. You really don't need the electric beater for this because it is such a a quick type of a bread, but if you can get those lumps out, just make sure you get them out, okay? So whisk it, good. Don't over mix the batter because you can toughen it, okay? There we go, that looks beautiful. Now I am just gonna take some of these strawberries and just fold them right into the batter. So they are patted dry, so there's less moisture going in here. This will be a very moist bread. Okay, so just gently fold these in. Now you can always take the strawberries and toss it in with a little bit of flour. A lot of times it won't sink, but this is a thick batter, so it's they're really not gonna sink. But a lot of recipes, you can do that. Okay, so if you can see, they hold up really well in here. It should stay just like that. I'm just gonna take a nine by five loaf pan. Just gonna give this a quick spray. Okay, so you don't wanna puddle in the corner. You just want a quick spray. That way you don't taste spray. spray. You just taste this really good strawberry festival bread. So we're just gonna take this batter just like this. Pour this all in here. When you cook this, maybe lift the bottom rack up one notch and then bake it in the 350 oven for 50 to 60 minutes. Make sure you spoon this out really evenly. That way it cooks nice and evenly. A toothpick uh, will tell you if it's done or not. And just kind of get that down on the side there. Leave nothing in the bowl. And now when you put it in the oven, I know when I'm at your library, I always tell you this, when we're doing baked goods, take a piece of aluminum foil and put it on the rack above. That way it doesn't get too dark too quickly, okay? So this is gonna go in the oven for one hour, okay? So I will be right back one second. Chris says we have a question. Uh, Lori, just put the uh, recipe in the chat for anyone that needs it. And thank you for doing that, Lori. So everybody, let's make the glaze while it is cooking. Okay. This would have been a real fun one to make at the library too, but we can always make it. We can make it again. Uh, but I have so many other recipes that we still have to do. And uh, I know Lori was saying when we get back into the library, we're going to do like a, you know, probably like a soup or pasta. And it'll be to go and you have your lunch to go. And that'll be our way of starting to get back into the libraries. Hey. <laughs> so, but in that other bag that I gave you, that is the one cup of the powdered sugar. Okay, just nice and level. And then you're gonna add either some heavy cream or some milk to it, okay? Now on the recipe, it will say 
five to six tablespoons. Put in about three first because, you know, it's it's kind of hard to measure uh, confectionery sugar that because uh, it's so fluffy. So this way you don't over, uh, don't make it too thin. You can always add more cream to it. Okay. So let's just take this. Let's see how this looks. And we'll see if we need more cream. And yeah, of course we do. But play it safe. So now what I would do is just kind of like one more tablespoon. Whisk this up. Make sure you get everything out of the inside of the whisk here. Go against the side of the bowl. Whisk it really hard. And now I would say just like a drop more. And then I think this is good. So it, this is really depends. Do you like your bread on the sweeter side? Do you like that sugar? If you only want to put a little bit, just do half of this. Okay, take a half of the confectionery sugar, uh, put the other in a, half, in a bag and just make a half the glaze, okay? So I made a bread, a strawberry festival bread. This is the way it should look when it comes out of the oven, okay? Hopefully that's the way it'll look when it comes out of the oven. That's our goal. Okay, so I'm just gonna leave this right over here. Lori says that a patron watching on Facebook asks that you use blueberries uh, and do you chop them? I wouldn't chop the blueberries. You really don't have to. Uh, they're so small and you want to get that nice burst of it. But sometimes with the heat, it's going to burst them anyway. Uh, so no, no is the answer. Okay. So now when, when this cools, you want to give this a good, probably 15 minutes, let it really cool down. If your hand feels a little bit of warmth on there, let it sit. Okay. And then you are going to drizzle the glaze on it. Yes, Chris. Susan said, I've never made the drizzle. The bread is wonderful on its own. Thank you, Susan. Thank you. Try it though one day with the drizzle though. I know the sugar is not good for us and all that, but then you're able to decorate it and make it look really pretty. You didn't put this... the vanilla in the... Um, Thank the you for that. See, I can't, I can't walk and chew gum at the same time. <laughs> so just a half a teaspoon of the vanilla extract, okay? Just a little splash. And even the sugar makes it really sweet anyway. The sugar makes it, yes, definitely makes it sweet. Now, since this bread is cold, this glaze will not really run off it, okay? And it will hold up really well, okay? So it's a yummy, and also on Facebook, Aunt Prudy said, hi, Robin, Chris. Hello. Hello, Aunt Prudy, how are you? Okay, so just kind of drizzle this. And we have another Facebook coming up this week, I know. And then we have another Zoom, two Zooms. I will tell everybody my schedule in a few minutes. So you, I'm gonna use pretty much all of this. And if it runs down the side, it's just because I went too close to the edges. That's all it is. It's not warm though, I promise. Okay, so now when July 4th comes and you wanna make this festive for the holiday, you can always take the blueberry strawberries and put them on top, okay? It makes it look really, really pretty. This freeze is excellent, this bread, okay? Well, these are the next Wednesday is your food festival that Isob Library is part of through Facebook. And I will go over that for your library, Glory. I promise. So this is the first time I think your library's doing the food festival. So everybody, I'm gonna tell you to go to the Islip Public Library to watch it, okay? And you can uh, call up and get the recipes ahead of time. I'll go over that in a minute. Let me just finish decorating this. Just gonna slice these strawberries. Just kind of fan it out on the bread. Cut them pretty thin. She said, great, thanks. Yes, first time we're taking part in your food festival. Thank you for doing that, Lori. I hope you're gonna have fun. I know you you see it at the other library where you do work. So uh, hope you have many patrons watching it. Okay. 
So just a couple strawberries on top. And you don't have to do it in rows like I'm doing. You could spread them all out all over the place, okay? You can just kind of go like this. And now this is where, if you want to make this for July 4th, you start taking some blueberries, just put it on here. And I promise you will make this cake again. And again. And again. <laughs> <laughs> and even if we're sick of it we'll make it again and again <laughs> so i'm gonna hold this up so everybody can take a look at the finished product that is what your strawberry festival bread should look like okay again try to use the buttermilk for it really really helps it along a great way deal okay um everybody i'm gonna give everybody my schedule coming up for this week and then go over about the food festival. So tomorrow night, if you're on Zoom and you want to see, a, you can go to different libraries and watch their Zoom. Uh, there's other people at your library tonight, so we all share. So tomorrow at 4.30, if you want to go to the Pound Ridge Public Library that up in New York, uh, we are doing a Greek yogurt apple blueberry bread, okay? And then on Thursday, we're at the Taft Public Library. I know everybody out there saying, Taft, where is that? So it is in uh, Massachusetts. And we will be doing a raspberry strawberry tiramisu trifle, okay? And then with that, we're gonna do crab and scallion stuffed artichoke hearts, okay? Using the lump crab meat. Uh, and then on Facebook, if you're on Facebook, uh, Friday at six o'clock Eastern time, we are going to be at the Cherokee city in Oklahoma doing a raspberry strawberry tiramisu trifle again, but we are also going to do a raspberry and mascarpone, the Italian cream cheese stuffed French toast. And it has like almond extract in it. It is really good. So if you like a really creative French toast, please watch. Um, the other one, the Facebook um, event that's at the Islip Public Library, that is on Wednesday, the 16th. We will be starting at seven o'clock. So just go to the Islip Public Library's Facebook page then, and we will make uh, jerk chicken kebabs with a watermelon fire and ice salsa. I'm gonna be doing a Greek shrimp and orzo salad with feta cheese and green onions and tomatoes. And then we're gonna do a red, white, and blueberry shortcake cake. Okay, so uh, shortcakes made into a big cake. So it's really, really good. So again, go to the Iceland Public Library for that. Okay, so now I have a little something I uh, wanna show everybody. I have done this for the adults, but it's been way, many, many years ago. But I do it for the children almost like every other year, every third year at the libraries. It's called a buried treasure. So the way to start it off, I guess, is I'll just show you. I got a pot of boiling water in here. I am just going to put a bowl on top. I am just going to put a little handful full of little chocolate chips. And then you can add just like a dot of either butter or vegetable oil just to kind of loosen it up, just a dot. Okay, that's all you need, okay? So while this is melting down, and that will melt really, really quickly, I promise you, I'm just gonna cut up some more berries. A lot of berries here of the Scott family, right, Chris? Yes. <laughs> well, we better grab now if there's a shortage, right? Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I am just gonna take the berries, any berries you want to use, if you want to put bananas in this, that works too. Put it in some nice slices like that. And I am going to mix this with some raspberries and I'm going to put some blueberries. So when I'm at the library and the kids are making this, I give them a plastic knife, they cut up their own berries, they paint their chocolate uh, waffle ice cream cone. Mm. And, uh oh, somebody likes that. 
And now I'm going to add some of the blueberries to this. So is it very good, hello. Very good. Some fresh raspberries in there. Let me, Chris, let's just go back over here a second. This should, this should melt down right now. So I'm just going to turn this burner right off. Don't want to burn the chocolate. Now, could I put this in the microwave? Absolutely, I could. But if you ever take chocolate and put it in the microwave and you let it go just a little bit too long, you know what happens, it curdles and you don't get it back. So I'm just gonna, and I'm showing you the way we do this at the libraries with the children. You take a little bit of chocolate, melted chocolate. We'll see when I do it with the kids, they don't take a little bit of chocolate. You should see the way they take it. <laughs> okay, just brush the sides right here, just like this. Okay. And I always leave the bottom not painted. And the reason I do that is because that way they can kind of grab it or hold it like that. He said, go big or go home. <laughs> do you if you want to paint the inside of this, by all means, feel free. Never heard anybody say, nope, don't want to paint the inside. Uh -huh. And then if you take a little bit of the raw sugar, I'm just gonna do it, I'm gonna do it right over the table right here. It, the raw sugar is what you get on sugar cookies, okay? Gives it a nice crunch. Okay, you could put a little inside as well. So I'm just gonna leave this just like this, right on the side here. Now, with these berries right here, I can put them right inside here if I want to do it that way. Or I have some berry glaze. Now you could either buy it or you can make it yourself. If you want to buy it, just go down like the ice cream aisle. There's like the Smucker's uh, like kind of ice cream topping on there. Or you can take fresh raspberries, a little bit of honey, maybe a dot of sugar, just because sometimes the raspberries can be a little bit bitter. and just kind of offset it and put it in the blender and then put it in a little squeeze jar just like this. So if you just take a little bit of this glaze, okay? And now I'm just gonna take a spoon, mix this up really gently, but make sure it kind of coats it. Just gonna put a dot more. Like that. And now we are just gonna fill up this waffle ice cream cone and always have it kind of popping out too, because you want them to fall all over the plate too, because on the sides, it just makes it look really pretty, really festive. When I was a personal chef, when they were having a really heavy dinner, I would always kind of lighten it up with dessert and do something like this. Mm. Anybody? Could you do that with the wa the waffle bowls that they have? Absolutely. Yep. That that would work perfect too. Yep. You can make almost like a little basket, you know, a little fruit basket. So just like that. So now if you go to a restaurant, that's probably like eight dollars. And then if uh, they come around and they just kind of go like this a little bit, you're looking at probably a, a twelve dollars, thirteen dollars, right? Okay, you can just make it nice and fancy like that. I'm gonna hold that up. Whoop. There we go. Looks like a yeah. corner. Yeah, Thanksgiving, right? <laughs> There's that. Making me fat looking at it. Making what? Making me fat just looking at it. <laughs> Yeah, but I got it right here, so I got to watch out. <laughs> so um, if anybody has any questions, comments, whether it's about the schedule, about baking, cooking, when we come in person, anything, feel free, okay? Anybody want to ask anything? You can.